My horizontal spinner guesstimate won its last tournament, but can we make it better using your suggestions? This video is sponsored by PCBWay. So what is this suggestion we're going for? Smaller motors. These are 1404 brushless motors. They are getting more and more popular in the quad racing space, and so they are getting more optimized. Apparently a bunch of people are already using 1404s in ant weights, and it's a whole lot smaller than the brushless motor that I have in this robot already, but it will necessitate completely changing over the gear stack in here for something that works just a little bit differently. Currently, the motor is running slower than I want it to, so it speeds the weapon up compared to the motor speed. In comparison, these 1404s are going to be ridiculously fast. They're something like 4,000 kV, so we actually want to change the gear setup so that the weapon is geared down from these motors. This will hopefully give them a little bit more startup torque, and let the weapon run a little bit better so that it doesn't have those weird intermittent issues we saw at the very end of the last meet. Of course, new weapon motors and new gearing means we need new mounting in our weapon supports here, and that is where PCB Way comes in. Because of course, we are doing PCBs again for our weapon supports. These things came out really, really well, as they always do from PCB Way. I love PCBs for this use case because they are much, much easier to do than carbon fiber and just as strong as carbon fiber, especially for this weight class. And again, they're so much easier to do because you can just design these up, give PCB Way the kind of rough dimensions of it, you can, of course, change a bunch of settings on their quote system as well, but I like the defaults because A, I like green, and also B, uh, the 24-hour build time is quite good, especially when you're running behind on a project and we need those PCBs really quickly. Once you've got a quote, you just click through and then upload your Gerber file and off you go. Very soon afterwards, you've got your own structural PCBs that you can use. And I, this process is just so easy. Guestimate is always going to use PCBs for this front section. But of course, with those in, we now need to get our motors sorted and get some gearing so that we can actually try out and see if we can spin an even heavier blade than the one that's on here. This is our motors prepped and ready because the next thing we need to do is grind off the shaft here. There really isn't a lot of room inside the kind of mechanism here. So these little shafts sticking out the top will bind everything up and just cause the weapon to stop working. I've wrapped these in tape just so that when I grind these down, all of the metal filings and shavings don't end up inside the magnets inside the motor because that would also cause everything to shut down. Perfect! Those have come out really, really well, with only this one showing an actual mark on the surface to see that I've actually done anything to them at all. Let's grab the 3D prints. So these have come out pretty well, despite the fact that these little guys really only have like a single wall between all the teeth. They are the minimum size gear that I can possibly fit on those 1404 motors. These big guys come out pretty well as well. I just need to get in here with uh, some side cutters and clean up some of these strings that are in here before we glue everything together. I'm just gonna super glue these together this time because I used epoxy last time, but I'm impatient today. So that kind of worked. The first one didn't really, it's at a bit of an angle and it's not like flush with the top of the motor, which means it's going to interfere with things. This is because I took the easy route and I used super glue and I didn't do it fast enough. The second one has come out exactly as it needs to. Everything spins, it's all working and I have soldered up the end. So that means it is time for us to actually put this thing into use. And realistically, we should just need to Take these bolts out of the top uh, and get this weapon bolt done. 
Also, at this point, I will say we're going to try and use this bar because it's slightly heavier than the one that's on here already and it's got most of the mass concentrated at the ends which means it's got the highest moment of inertia so therefore it should hit incredibly hard and that is exactly what I want. So that's why this guy has been set up in such a way that it can bolt into here and everything should work perfectly. And then it's finally time to get out our brand new PCB and attach this motor to it. Now you can see in here I've got slots because I wasn't quite sure what gear ratio I wanted on this. So I basically set it up so that any gear ratio will work or at least any of the ones that I was looking at by sliding the motor back and forth and bolting it in place with a couple of bolts. Uh, and basically every position that this, can, this motor can go in, it can be attached with at least two bolts. So that is good and very handy that I can just like design a slot in a PCB and it can be manufactured, which I was a little bit worried I hadn't ever put slots in a PCB before like this and PCB way handled it absolutely fine. No issues, I didn't even get an email or a message or anything from them saying, hey, are you sure that this is what you wanna do? They just did it, even with the fact that there is only a very tiny amount of PCB material between these two slot, uh, outer slots here that apparently worked absolutely fine on their end and it's come out with a really nice part. It's a bit of a fiddle to get this all together because these two bolts here hold so much of the robot together in terms of like where the weapon is, where the lid is, all of that kind of stuff. But look at that, that's working and it's spinning the motor totally fine. It's also just clearing inside. Everything looks like it's going to spin up. Uh, maybe. Ah, I see. I need to actually put, I need to put a couple of washers in this side just to like keep that where it needs to be because if it floats too high this way, it's gonna slam into that motor top. So I'll just put some washers in here, make sure that that stays where it needs to stay. So, in the first test, I could not get the weapon to spin up at all, which was uh, really annoying. Uh, so I pulled the robot out and I loosened off the weapon bolt just a little bit, seeing if that would give it enough space to kind of spin back up again. And with that, it was looking like it wanted to go, but I couldn't get it going unless I spun the robot round, and then it did get up to speed, and oh my gosh, this is terrifying. That weapon is going insanely fast and I love it. So I turned the robot off so I could throw something in to hit and then I couldn't get the weapon to spin back up. No matter what I tried, I could not get the weapon to spin back up. This is annoying because from the test footage, I could see that the weapon would kind of start to spin back up and then it would just like stop. And I thought it was hitting the chassis or something, but I'm not sure if I can get a good view of this on camera. Right now, it's this is a stick point, like right here. It doesn't really want to go past this point in the gear system. Uh, and it's not actually touching anything. Everything is clearing. These bolts don't, aren't hitting the motor, nothing's hitting the frame, and yet there is a stick point there. And that is what was happening, is that if I spin it, it gets to a kind of like point where things just get a little bit tight. Ah ha ha, I have it. By using paint pens and marking teeth on my gears, I very quickly worked out, just by like spinning the thing around and working out when everything jammed up, that it was one valley in the motor gear that was causing everything to jam. There was no consistency in the jams on the big gear, it was all in the little gear. So I pulled everything apart, just went at that with side cutters and a little knife and just did everything I could to smooth that out and get rid of whatever was jamming it and check this out.
<laughs> yes, I didn't even have to spin round for the weapon to spin up. It just spun up. That is crazy. This thing is a very heavy blade with all that weight at the edges. There is so much inertia in this. For it to just spin up like that first try, insane. Love it to pieces. So let's hit something. Yes, awesome. I am over the moon. That worked out super, super well. Turns out if you are running gears, you need to make sure those gears are as clean and smooth as possible for them to work. It works really well like that. Oh my God. Uh, I mean, obviously because of the way this weapon is set up, it is all about like delivering the most energy. I'm not ever gonna be cutting through people with this specific blade, but I am going to be throwing both of us around the arena, which is what you saw there in the new test box uh, was guesstimate going absolutely flying, hitting that 150, 170 gram brick of plastic and metal. There's a kind of weapon disc stuffed up inside there to give it a bit of extra mass and yeah, Ah, oh, that worked so incredibly well. I, yeah, thank you uh, to the commenter who told me to try the 1404 motors. Yes, they work very well, and I'm damn sure that this is faster than the old weapon motor system was. And hopefully, as long as I can keep these teeth clean, it should be more reliable. That's awesome. Uh, I hope you have enjoyed this one, and I will see you in the next video.